This is a 20 second lesson on working power. And in this lesson, you're going to be able to define working power. You're going to be able to calculate any variable in, in working power equations. Um, we can calculate working power when forces applied at an angle as well. So we'll look at all these, these things. Uh, work, first of all, is the transformation of energy from one form to the other. So if you take a look, the stick man is doing work to lift up the work rock. And when he lifts up the rock, he's taking um, the energy and he's putting it into potential energy. And then after he drops the rock, you can see that gravity is actually doing work, pulling it down with the force of its weight um, down to earth. And so you can do the work to lift it up. Gravity can do the work to, to, to take it down. And you can see work is the force applied times the distance here. We'll see a little bit later. The MKS unit is the joule for any form of energy. So we'll talk about this with mechanical energy, which is kinetic and potential a little more in the next lesson. Um, but joule is going to be used for, for energy, for heat, for any sort of energy you'll see. And it's equal to the work done. It's the F equals... Um, so a work equals force times distance, so it'd be W equals FD in the equation, and it's going to be equal to the, the amount of newtons, one newton, to move an object one meter. And so these are the different equations you're going to see. Um, work, the variable, is um, W in our equations. The unit's going to be the joule, and, um, and the unit abbreviation is going to be capital J. Power, that's going to be the variable P. Uh, the unit's going to be the watt. And uh, you know, abbreviation we're going to use as a capital W. Then time, what you've seen before, is just a little t and it's seconds, and s is what we use. So we have the F equals W D equation, and we have our basic power equation as well. And we have a combination of the two. Since work is equal to force times distance, we can substitute that in for the work and come up with this combined equation. It just all depends on the givens we're given in a, in a problem. So work is force applied over a distance. It's only done if an object moves. So this is going to be key, key right there. If you don't get any distance out of something, if you put up, no matter how much you push, you're going to do no work because anything times zero is zero. So work would have been zero as well. So when you're looking at this equation, you're thinking, okay, how many work joules of work did you do? Well, you're looking for W. How many newtons of force did you apply in the direction of motion? Well, that's going to be the F in the equation. And how many meters did it move? So if you were asked for any one of these things, but given the other two, you'd be able to rearrange this and solve for any different part. And just a reminder, so W is equal to F times D. F would equal to, divide out the D, W over D. And then if I wanted to go ahead and get distance alone, I would divide out the F. And so I divide, divide out the F, distance would equal to work over force, depending on how the questions ask and what you have, what you have to do with that. Okay, so work is done, and so whenever I do this little thing, it's just showing you that the work is only happening if the force and whatever part of the force is in the direction of the actual motion that's occurring. If motion is up at a constant rate, the force is equal to the magnitude of the weight of the object. So if you're lifting an object up, often the force is just going to be equal to the weight, and if you're given uh, um, mass in kilograms, you might have to multiply that by 10 to find the weight and be a constant rate. Because if you're lifting something at a constant rate, you're applying a force equal to its weight. Um, and so that you would find its weight, and then that would be the force that you would apply into this equation for however far up you're, you know, the height you're lifting the object. How much work is done when a force of 50 newtons is applied to a box 6 meters? So in here, we're asked for work, we have 50 newtons is applied. Um, we have a distance of 6 meters, doesn't say anything about the force, we can only assume it's in the same direction. So we do the work equation, and when we plug in our numbers, we get 300, and once again, the unit is going to be the joule for work, because it's a form of transfer of energy. A student lives a physics book applying a force of equal to its 10 newton weight, a distance of 3 meters up. How much work did the student do on the book? So we have work, and we're lifting it up with a force equal to its weight. So we're going to go ahead and say that our force is 10 newtons and the distance is 3 meters. And then this question, it gave us newtons of weight. So we didn't have to worry about taking kilograms and, mul and, and multiplying by 10 to make it newtons of weight. And we have a distance of 3 meters and we just go to our same equation, um, 10 times 3, and we get 30 joules for this answer. How much work is done when a force of 50 newtons is applied but does not move a box? So this is kind of a trick question. Once again, like before, no work is done, no matter how much force you put in. If it doesn't, if this is zero, that's always going to be zero as well. 
So Sergio pus pu pushes the box with 50 newtons of force forward. When it did not move, he pushed even harder with 100 newtons of force, but the box still didn't move. When did Sergio do more work? And the answer here is going to be neither. Um, it doesn't matter how much you're pushing. Um, and sometimes when it's written as a multiple choice question, it could be more tricky because you think, all right, he did a little more force. He pushed a little harder. He's doing work because he's going to be sweating. But that's not the deal here. Work is force times distance when there is a distance in the first place. So neither would be the answer. Uh, work and power when force is at an angle. So if we're ever applying force at the angle, the only thing that's going into work is going to be not the 60 newtons, so that your uh, sled is pulled by a boy with a force of 60 newtons at a 35 degree angle from the horizontal. How much work is done on the sled to move it 15 meters forward? Well, this is the, the, the side that's actually going to be the work into the, that's going to be the motion. This object's going to move this way, so the direction is going to be that way. We want to find this side. And so we have the, the, the actual force he's applying is going to be the hypotenuse of this triangle. We're trying to find this adjacent side. And we're not really concerned with this. If we were trying to do normal force or something with friction, then we might deal with this side. But for here, we're just trying to find this side because this is the side that's going into work. So we want to find that side. And with adjacent and hypotenuse, that leads you to the cosine. And since we're going to be typing in cosine here, uh, we want to make sure your calculator is in degrees. If you're in radians, um, it's not going to work here when you're typing in 35 degrees. And so we can rearrange that, and a lot of you already have it rearranged on, on a piece of paper somewhere. Adjacent equals cosine angle times hypotenuse. So all we have to do is plug in our numbers through the cosine of the 35 times the 60, and we're going to get this adjacent side. And that ends up being 49 newtons. Well, that's the force that's going into work, and the work is going to move this object. It's going to be part of this 15 meters. It's going to move in that direction. So the direction is going to be 15 meters that way. And so we take work is equal to force times distance. We now apply our our force and distance, and we get 735 joules. Once again, we're not going to get all of this. We need to figure this side out, and that's what's going into the work equation because it's moving 15 meters that way. And so we have to go with the exact same direction of force, not this direction. Power is the rate which work is done. The unit of power is the watts. The watts equal to the joule per second. So it's a rate. When you ever hear rate, it has to do with something over time. The rate that this work is going to be done and we have a com the combination equation from before that I told you. Um, we might be given work in time, but we might also be given force distance in time. Or we might be given three of these things and solve asked to solve for another variable. So we could be, be given two of these things, and we'd have to rearrange and solve for another variable. That'd be fine, too. As long as you're given two of these three things, you can solve for the third. As long as you're given three of these four things, you can solve for the fourth. The card is 2,450 2, joules of work in eight seconds. What's the power of the car? This is just straight up. They're giving you the amount of work. They're giving you the time. They ask you for power. Go straight to our equation. And no rearranging required. They give it everything that was just set up the way it needed to be. And our answer here would be 306 watts. Joe can live, uh, go up a flight of stairs. He's going upward, so think and wait probably right now. In 15 seconds, if the physics teacher weighs, so Joe is a physics teacher, weighs 850 newtons, and the vertical height of the stairs is 10 meters, so he's going to take his weight and he's going to move it up 10 meters. So, and it's going to take 15 seconds to do this. So he has a weight that he's taken up of 850 newtons. It's going to take 15 seconds. He's going to go up 15 meters. We're asked for power, so we're going to go to the longer equation with work already written out as force times distance. And we plug in our variables, 850, 10, and, and the 15. We're going to get an answer of 567 watts. For number eight, how much force is required to move an object 25 meters in six seconds with a power output of 50 watts? So here, I'm asking you for force. I'm asking you for something else. You have to rearrange the equation. We're given a distance. We're given a time. We're given a power. And so we rearrange this equation. When we rearrange this equation, force is on top. We want to divide out D. So when we divide out D, we divide out D. That cancels out D. We multiply out T. We multiply out T. That cancels out T. And so PT over D, that's our equation rearranged. Now we can go plug in our values and we're going to get a force of 12 newtons. Once again, we're going with M MKS units all the way through, so we're going to get an MKS unit back and force was in newtons. So here's a problem set. Once again, if you, um, you shouldn't, you should make sure you do the problem set before you check your answers or at least check them out one by one as you do them. And I'm just going to go through these quickly. How much work is done to push a five meter, uh, push a box five meters with a force of 12 newtons? It's going to be a straight up standard question given distance and force, we're going to get 10 times 3, we're going to get 30 joules. 
how much work is required to lift a four kilogram box at constant rate, of, uh, at, rate at a height of two meters. So we're going to have to figure out its weight. We'll find its weight taking the mass times gravity, and we get 40 newtons. So we're going to rate, raise this at a constant rate, so we're going to have to apply a force of 40 newtons. So that will be our 40 newtons there. We're taking it up two meters. There's our distance. We can go to our work equation now after doing this little extra at the beginning, and we get our work. The, our work is going to be 80 joules. Once again, just don't be confused. This is the variable work. This is unit joules. So when you see watts over here, or W here, that's actually power. So be careful with that. What's power output of a person that pushes a box five meters? And often you'll see things like power output um, in three seconds with a constant force of 12 newtons. So we have 12 newtons, we got five meters, we got three seconds. We're asked for power. We can go to the longer equation. It's already set up exactly the way you're going to type it in. So you have your 12, your 5, and the 3. You're going to get a power of, once again, this is now the unit, not the variable. So 20 watts is going to be our answer here. How much work would you have um, when 12 newtons of force were applied at an object at an angle of 25 degrees? So you're pulling it up. You're not going to get that whole point. You need to get this whole amount, this 12. We want to find out how much we're actually going to go, how much is going to go into work by finding this side. So we take the cosine of the hypotenuse, uh, so the angle 25 times the hypotenuse, and we get an answer of 10.88 newtons. So this is going to be 10.88 newtons. This is what's going to go into the motion. And the motion, the, direct, the, the distance was 5 meters horizontally that it went. So it went that way, both in the same direction. And so we're solving for work. And at this point in time, after we did this extra part, we just plug in our numbers. And we get 54.4 joules is our answer here. What's your power output when applying the, new, um, the 12 newtons? So it's the same thing before, but now I'm giving you um, it takes three seconds to do it, so we've already done all the work in the previous problem. Just plug in the, the number of joules from before, take the time, and we get a power of 18.13 watts. The last one, and a woman is pulling her luggage with a 25 newton force at an angle 55 degrees. What's her power output if it takes 15 seconds to pull a suitcase uh, 20 newtons forward? So we're going to go ahead, we're going to figure out how much force is going into this. So we're trying to find this side using the hypotenuse, so that's going to lead us to the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the cosine. Uh, rearranged as this, that cosine angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse becomes this. We plug in our values at 55 degrees um, angle, got our 25 newtons, and we find that this, we're only going to get 14.3 newtons. We're not going to get that much because this angle is pretty steep, um, so it's pretty big of an angle. So this is only going to be a small portion of it. We get 14.3 newtons. We have a distance of 20 meters. We're asked for power. So now we can go to the power equals force distance over time. We're given time 15 seconds up here. The t equals 15 seconds. I left that out earlier. And we get our values. We plug them in, and we get a final answer of 19.07 watts.